13.1 is called the time value of money. In this section, we're going to be learning different formulas that are related to money. So I'm going to go over the three formulas that are in this section to start with. The first formula is simple interest. And the formula that we're going to be using is I equals P R T. Now each one of these letters stands for something. And these things are going to be given to us in the problem. So I stands for interest, the simple interest that we're looking for. So that's our answer. We're going to use this formula anytime we're asked to find the simple interest. P stands for principal. This is the initial amount of money or what we're starting with. always going to be money. R stands for interest rate. We're always going to want to write this as a decimal when we plug it into our formula. So for instance, if I was given 5%, I would write that as 0 0.05. And we'll see that in a second when I work the problem. And our last variable is T. This stands for time, and I'm going to want to write that in years. So sometimes it will be given to me in years, and I would just plug that number in, or it might be given to me as 24 months, and then I would write two years. The next formula is the compound interest formula. The compound interest formula is going to be really easy to tell when to use. It's always going to have the word compound or compounded in the problem. And its formula is written like this. The P and the R stay the same. They always mean um, principal and our interest rate. So we only have three new letters to worry about. Big A is the amount at the end. That's the final amount. Again, that's going to be money, just like the principal was. M stands for the number of times compounded, and that's going to be given in the formula. I said they're always going to use the word compounded, so they might say something's compounded monthly or compounded quarterly. If something's compounded monthly, then M is 12. If something's compounded quarterly, then M is 4. There are four quarters in a year. If something's compounded annually, that's once a year, like we have one birthday a year. If something's compounded biannually, that's two times a year. Bi meaning two, like a bicycle. And the last one and the trickiest one is N. N is what we just found for M times t, and we said t was our years. So for instance, if we were compounded monthly 12 times for two years, I would have 24 for n. Again, I'm going to use this whenever I see the word compounded, and I'm going to use this when I'm asked to find the simple interest. We'll see problems worked in just a second. The last problem, or the last formula, is called the compound continuously. This formula is going to be used when we see a problem that talks about compounding continuously. Let me change markers. Sometimes this is referred to as PERT. P-E-R-T. PERT. A, P, R, and T stay exactly the same. Same letters we've had before. Final amount, beginning amount, interest rate, and a decimal and time in years. So the only new thing we have here is E. E is actually a number. It's a number that we can find on the calculator. It's about 2.71. That's an approximation. Kind of like we say pi is 3.14.
But to find the exact E, we're going to use it on our calculator. We are not going to type in 2.71. So I'm going to find this on the calculator. It is usually somewhere near the LOG button. or the LN button. A lot of chapter 13 is going to be feeling comfortable with the calculator and knowing how to use it. And this is one of the first times when that comes up. So this is going to take a little bit of patience and manipulation and just digging in there and seeing if you can find that E button on your calculator. It's usually going to be written as E with a little X on top. That's how you'll know if you found the right button. So those are our three formulas that we'll be using in section 13.1. On the next video, I'll be working a couple problems so you can see how to type in your calculator. Good luck.